My name is Kit. My name is Madison. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, Streaming the Boys. The Boys. And now the boys are back together, but you didn't even know the boys were gone. Nope. Actually, now that I think about it, with the podcast magic, you didn't know Madison was gone for a while. Yeah, through the magic of podcasting, for you guys, it's only been a week since the last episode of The Boys dropped. For us, it's actually been like, what, two weeks? Five years. Five years. (laughs) (laughs) It's been a long time. We've been planning this season for a long time. I've lived whole lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Madison, (laughs) is that you? Get lazy. My (laughs) eldest friends. We met before the wars, <laughs> plural. <laughs> the world wars? The world wars. Mm. One of them. Fucking diabolical. <laughs> but no, it's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, we missed you. Oh, I missed you But now guys. you're back. We don't miss you anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's over. This is The Boys, season four, episode five. Beware the jabber work, my son. Mm. What a great title. Is it? It's, I mean, it sounds fun. It threw me off a little bit. You thought it was going to go walkie? Mm-hmm. Like Jabberwocky? Jabberwocky. Sure. Or an Ewok, if you will. Even after watching. A Wookie, if you will. A Wookie. The title. Wookie Wookie. Doesn't make any sense to me. None of these have. That's fair. Well, yeah. I guess like maybe loosely, but for this, I was like, oh, are they introducing Ryan as like, that's his n- superhero name? Jabberwork? <laughs> Highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. I, I, I was. You're, that's could be Homelander speaking, but it could also be Hugh Senior, mm. or it could be a priest. <laughs> you know, could I don't be. Know. It didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> like Ezekiel, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It didn't make any sense. You wear the jabber work, my the, son. Yeah, because again, we kind of pointed this out on our uh, House of the Dragon coverage. We are watching all these on screeners, so we don't have the benefit of some of the, you know, the stuff that people were able to. Research after the fact. Yeah, you guys get to Google and sound <laughs> smart. We don't have that. Yeah, it's just our hot takes. We re- we record, we watch the episode, we just turn on the mics, we go raw hot take. Yeah, we can't do our own research. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We're not we're not firecracker. <laughs> we're not doing our own research. <laughs> have you learned nothing from 2020? Right. Do your own research. Yeah, I didn't at all. <laughs> By the way, uh, maybe that's what the jab and jabberwock is. Hardcore conservatives <laughs> have just now the realized injection. jab. That the boys is making fun of them. Have you guys read the news? Oh, yeah. I feel like this was something we talked about last season as well, or maybe even season two, oh, no. like that, uh, like hardcore right wingers were like, what? Homelander's the bad guy. But mm. it, but I mean, it's it's always funny. <laughs> it's just kind of like, what do you guys think it was about? Duh. Like what? <laughs> is media literacy in this country that in the tubes? It yes. is. Yeah. But uh, it, is. it is crazy. It is depressing. So even though we don't know what the title <laughs> means, we have watched the episode very recently. And we're going to do our overall thoughts on the episode, go around the table, talk about how we're feeling about the season so far, what episode five did for us. And then we'll do a the deep dive, a full recap and discussion scene by scene, play by play. And we'll cap it all off with a few fun segments like our diabolical moments section where we talk about our top three favorite moments in the episode. I totally hit the wrong button. Hello. Fucking diabolical. Fucking diabolical. <laughs> it still worked. I, sh- I should have ad libbed that. I should have seen you press the button and it ro- was wrong. No, it wasn't wrong. We're, we're going to do our diabolical moments. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and we will, we will enter the vault vault. Uh, some Easter eggs, you know, some deep dive things that we pulled out from the episode, maybe comic book references, things mm. like that. Pausing a screen and going through all their little jokes, that kind of stuff. And then we'll wrap it all up with our compound VIP nomination, our favorite performance of the episode. We'll go around the room and each nominate a person for that victory. Yeah, we will. And it's in their Instagram bios. You know, at this point, Karen Fukuhara is like six time kit laser nominated streaming things compound VIP winner. Soon to be seven. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Probably. As long as she was on screen, it's it's a high likelihood. She's She's in the race. She's in there. (laughs) You can email the show at streamingthingspod at gmail.com and uh, support the show to get our Game of Thrones coverage hot off the presses. Mm. Early access to merch, mm. uh, early access to our live show. That's over, but maybe next time, if you're still a patron, you'll get that. Uh, bonus episodes, <laughs> you know, a couple of months, ad free episodes, all kinds of stuff. I can't even fully enumerate all yeah, the rewards ad-free. you would be given. Yeah, so many, so many rewards, ad free. Go get them, mm. but still get those live show tickets. They're still available. They are still available on sale. Should mm. we get into it? I guess. <laughs> I guess that's why we're all here. Madison, what did you think? of episode five, Beware the Jabberwork, My Son. 
Aside from the weird ass episode name, I think this has been my favorite episode so far. Um, really? Oh, mm, do I smell an unpopular opinion? No, no, probably not. Um, I so prior to watching this, we were told that um, they were ending um, the boys with five seasons. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that has since skewed my view of how I look at the show and what they're doing in this season, but it kind of created a sense of release and allowed me to like push as push off a lot of pressure on the show. Maybe, I don't know, but I really liked this episode. I think because they, um, I know we just got like kind of the, the boys group together. They went to the, the farm. They, there was like this weird, um, storyline with Stan Edgar that I wasn't expecting and it really worked. And I really liked how they, um, kind of incorporated Newman as again, this makeshift villain slash like not, um, and also how they told this story in composite, like juxtapo juxtaposed with the, was it the V 52 expo? I thought yeah, it was really cool. Um, and yeah, I just think it was a very buttoned up, well-rounded, um, funny, uh, episode and uh, in comparison to the first four, I think this one has, has been the best and kind of projects the, uh, the hype for the remainder of the season. Love it. Steve, what about you? Uh, I agree with Madison. I think, I don't know if this is my favorite episode of the season yes. so far, but it's definitely a return to form mm -hmm. uh, cause the last couple episodes while I was laughing at the jokes, I would like oh, the overall story of the individual episodes. I was, I found myself like not really digging some of the plot lines that were going on. I still don't dig a lot of the plot lines that are going on to be Frank, but just be Steve. Yeah. Just, I, I should just be Steve. You're right. Uh, but to be honest, this, this episode, like even though those, those uh, storylines that I'm not super into are still there, this episode took a step back from a lot of those and just like, hey, let's get the band together and let's go after the the, the major plot. Like, what are we doing? We're looking for this serum uh, that could kill soup, soups. Specifically, we're trying to find one that can get Homelander. Let's bring back Stan, Stan Edgar. Let's bring back Newman. Let's put these characters together on a farm and actually like try to the boys, you know, let's try to do our the thing that we're supposed to do all together uh, minus Huey. And um, so that was far more enjoyable. And even the Huey stuff that they've been um, laying down the foundation for the for the last several episodes, I don't think it's a perfect journey. But I got to be honest with you, like the, the way it ended did get me. And I'm like, oh, like there's definitely holes with how we got here. But now that we're here, I'm happy that we're here. And, and part of that is because we can just move on from the storyline. But I think it ended in a satisfying way. But on top of that, there's also this a lot of really funny biting commentary. I mean, obviously, the the political commentary is usually on the nose in this season, um, which which I like. But uh, I also really enjoyed the commentary on um, how uh, like the movie industry and TV industry and streaming services are currently done. Like they have this whole uh, V52 Expo that is kind of the focus of the first half of the episode. And all of the jokes in there are really funny, especially if you know, if you're kind of a nerd like us that ingests this type of stuff. Uh, so that was just a lot of fun to be around. So this was probably like, I would say the return to form uh, in, like in the season because, and, you know, I, I was kind of wondering like, man, if I weren't wasn't covering this season for the show, I don't know how much I would continue going with it because I was kind of getting bored with the overall story. But then this episode came on. I was like, oh. I'm back. Mm -hmm. I'm, you got me. I'm hooked. I'm really excited to see what happens next episode. Uh, and I think they're going to start taking her home, as it were. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the turning She's point. had too much to drink. Yeah. Give me your keys, girl. I'm taking her <laughs> home. What about you, Kit Laser? I, um, I like the episode well enough. I agree that it's better than, than episodes three and four. Um, I'm still not, I'm not all the way back in. I'm still pretty disappointed with this season as a whole. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can't put my finger on why, I, like I talked ad nauseum about, I kind of think there's some relapsing on some of the emotional arcs of some of the characters and in one case, quite literally, um, which is fine. I, I do think there's some kind of 
taking the long way around to where they know they're going. Like they could, they said they're going to end it with season five. I really feel like they could have ended it with season four. Mm. Um, and it would have been a lot better for me, but I agree with you guys that, um, like the, the whole Huey arc with his dad, that was kind of where the, where is this going? Has perhaps because it ended and I'm just glad it's over, but also I did, I had hit, I cried and stuff. And that mm-hmm. was actually a turning point in liking this episode for me. Um, uh, I, I just love the show so much typically, and I'm shocked that I don't feel that way right now. And so that I'm just kind of reckoning with that. But I, I'm also extremely confident that maybe even the second half of this season will will kick ass. But I, I know for a fact that the, that the ending will be something crazy and cool. But there's certain moments where and maybe some people have always felt this way. Um, it's the closest I've come to what it feels like to read the comics sometimes, like mm-hmm. just a <sighs> You know, like I'm in, this is fun, but like, you're just trying so hard to be weird as in crazy as shit, you know? Yeah. Uh, and there's like flying sheep and <laughs> people exploding again. And I'm you, like, you like the flying sheep. I don't know if I'm the vampire. Maybe, sheep? maybe it's just the mood I was in. <laughs> there was you one really thing. You really wanted to see that flying bull and it was taken away from you. <sighs> Literally ripped away from you. It ripped was. Ripped apart away Literally. from you. I, uh, I just didn't know what was going on in that. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And maybe I was distracted by um, some stuff in that. The bulletproof, bulletproof chicken was pretty. That was, was pretty hilarious. Fire. Pretty fire. Oh, me the, like we the French and the. What <laughs> the Kentucky fucking chicken is this? Yeah, Kentucky Fried Massacre. Yeah. Um, there was that would have been joke, a good episode name. That would have been. There was one joke that really, really hit that shouldn't have because it's dumb as shit. And I laughed so hard because I'm dumb. <laughs> Uh, but at the same time, I was like, why are they like walking? I just don't, uh, to this day, I don't know why they were walking like the Secret Service and the vice president and the the CIA death squad and the imprisoned CEO are all just traipsing for miles across this farmland. And I, I guess they're looking for Samir or something, maybe. But yeah, I think they're just looking for signs of where everyone is. I was like, what's going on? What's going on right now? What in the CW is happening right now? The, the whole farm plot line. Is, is it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, but I was finding myself like there were several things and we'll get into it when we do the recap. There were several things that were happening where my critical eye would come on that mm-hmm. was asking like, why this? Why is this happening? Why is this not happening? Right. And but but it wasn't it didn't like take me out of it. In a like I wasn't not enjoying it because of it, that, was but it was just still more kind so of funny. Like you reflect on it and you're like, interesting choice. Yeah. Yeah. Choices location. were made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, oh, it's hopped up sheep who can fly and they can rip people apart easily. Let's go into the rickety old barn. That's safe. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> with a skylight, right. by the way. Again, it's it's funny, <laughs> but why is this even a threat? You know what I mean? You've got like an Omega level. Oh, man. You, 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 v I, user. Wait, are you coming in? Are you coming in hot right now? So yeah. You would you would take out them sheep? Yes, I feel like you Victoria ch- Newman. You would grab that sheep and say, fuck you. Victoria Newman should have been. <laughs> fuck you, sheep. Severely underwhelmed by the threat of the sheep. Kamiko should have found it fun to fight them. <laughs> and I know that they like nerfed Starlight. She's having some issues. So I could take her out. I don't even know what her powers are most of the time anyway. Right. And <laughs> I mean, well, I they mean, don't if, have electricity in that farm. What's she going to do anyway? <laughs> well, if we're going to talk about it, I mean, am I, I'm under the impression that these sheep are also emitting like parts of the virus they don't have the virus yet okay they put the well, virus maybe... in them with the dead body right yeah the compound v got into the water supply so they're hopped up on v but they don't have the virus yet. you know what i mean I like i know it doesn't matter but my brain was going oh kamiko someone that someone that they sure. throw at homelander in a, in a pinch is just like ah running from this sheep <laughs> but that's fucking horrifying man <laughs> <laughs> sheep are scary to begin with. Those That's teeth were fucking huge, bro. <laughs> now they fly. It was Maybe it's me. less less of a fact that she could have taken them, more the fact that her brain just wasn't processing it. it was like, ah! I mean, <laughs> I get fair. initially like with the chickens and stuff. That's what the joke was. But then like th- this became an actual like, how are we going to get out of this pickle? We're stuck in the barn. I'm like, no, you're fucking not. <laughs> One of you can control blood. Victoria also, Newman's literal so power Newman, is she can make anyone's blood do whatever but, but it wants. Newman, I think you can explain a way that maybe she's trying not to use her power because I don't know if her guards are in on she the She used it to, to, to protect Stan, to explode one of the chickens. That's true. She did. And I was she, like, okay, cat's out of the beans out of the bag now. That's true. That's true. You got me there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to like, you know, it's not I the mean, kind I of show like where you need to be like, Bleh, but. but she didn't hydrate. <laughs> her leg was cramping. You know, she, she wasn't in it. She wasn't wearing her glasses. She couldn't see. 
Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's, it's a critical scene for a reason. Like, I don't, I don't think it's the best like layout of how that should have, or at least like the discovery of the virus and like the, how the compound V was being used or whatever. But like, I mean, you win some, you lose some, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I like that you guys enjoyed it so much. And also I do agree that it's an uptrend in season four, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Um, we may also, disagree on how high the pink peaks are. I'm going to need you to explain some Jar Jar references to me. Okay. Looking <laughs> other than the fact that it's, that, that's a character in Star Wars that it's named after. <laughs> Speaking of Jar Jar, not to bring up Bonnaroo again, but there was a guy that had a, had a totem pole and it just had Jar Jar Binks faces, face on it. And every time like I saw it on a spike, on a spike. And every time I saw it, it was like spinning so fast, like 360, like but just were, were his ears flying around. Yes. <laughs> It was so funny. I wish That's I took bomb a, bad. I wish I took a video of Misa it. Misa spinning. <laughs> Misa go spinning. Misa spin and rave. Um, but yeah, that, those are our overall thoughts. Let's get into the deep dive so we can get into the meat and taters of some of these issues that we have or don't have and see what we come up with. Deep thoughts with the deep. It all starts with what looks like a Vought commercial, but it's actually what we discussed earlier, the V52 Expo, which is a rip a riff on the, the D23 Expo. D23, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, meanwhile, Homelander is having some of those sick flashbacks of um, the the devastation and carnage that he wrought in that basement and other things, his childhood. Which I do want to say, like, I think my my how I criticized episode four, I think is like I think what I really wanted out of episode four in terms of like Homelander torturing those people downstairs is what he's experiencing right now. Like I was hoping for there to be more like exposure to what he went through. Like he talked about it, but there wasn't any flashbacks. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Sure. And I liked how they you wanted more interiority maybe. Yeah. Or just maybe like showing him when he was little. And I like how we're getting those flashbacks now. I wish it was more prominent in episode four, but I'm glad that we've, we've peeked into it in this episode. Yeah. We're getting there. I think yeah. we're going to have some deep Homelander stuff by the end of this season. Uh, but they talk about phases seven through 19. I got a good kick out of that. It mm -hmm. looked like they had a bunch of projects planned. Mm -hmm. um, then we cut to Hugh Sr., Huey's dad. He feels great because he had that V injected into him by mama. Uh, and he's talking, I don't, the last thing he remembers is getting those pizza rolls. Was it Supreme flavored? But that, yeah, they're out of pepperoni. So he ended up getting uh, Supreme, which Supreme. as someone who does partake in the pizza roll. Yeah, you're a, a, a frequent Connoisseur. Uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm basically Hugh Senior. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of. <laughs> yeah, so I, if you go to the store and they're out of pepperoni, it's like ah, I don't want to get Supreme mm. or sausage. Cheese. Maybe all the other ones don't taste right. No. The cheese doesn't taste right. It's pepperoni so, only. Honestly, the veggie. pepperoni only. Sometimes pepperoni and bacon. That's good. Mm. But those are harder to find. <laughs> it's, 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 if they're out of pepperoni, they're honest, out of pepperoni. Bread. I didn't know that there were different versions of pizza rolls. I just <laughs> thought it was one, one flavor. One that's flavor. Be, that's because you're a functioning adult. Mm. <laughs> I am not. I'm a crippled you know, adult all the child. Flavors. The pepperoni and bacon is like the small I just batch. don't think I, I, in my head, I'm like, oh, I just don't have, I just don't have the money to buy pizza rolls. Which I know is, sounds bad, but just like, it's such like a, oh, I need to like build up to this. I need to like win adulthood in a way to, is it weird to, that to you saying that rolls? made me feel so much better about my own financial situation like oh i got pizza rolls money girl ooh, i got pizza girl. rolls i didn't pizza know i had it money. so good well, no it's just i was saying like <laughs> i feel like in order to buy pizza rolls you have to be like you gotta be feeling good you know what i mean not that i'm not feeling great but uh, like, i can tell you from steve's experiment and that's not the case <laughs> i've seen him weep anyway, over a batch of pizza rolls besides many times the point usually it's it's feeling bad i don't <laughs> frequent the pizza rolls <laughs> In the frozen meal aisle. Well, I did not know there were several different flavors. Give it 10 more years. Okay. You know, capitalism will weigh you down. Okay. The buffalo chicken ones are trash. Just warning you. <laughs> <laughs> Just warning you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they got into the hallway and uh, Huey and his mother discuss, you know, you gave him the V? Like, yeah. So apparently it fell out of his pocket and she was like, look, man, I thought you were doing the whole uh, uh, Kylo Ren thing. You know, you know what you have to do, but you don't know if you have the strength to do it. So I thought I would throw it in Let there. Let the past die. Yeah, kill it if you have to. <laughs> Via, um, so yeah, that's what she did. She put it in. She Couldn't in. bear the thought of you losing another parent. Oh, yeah, she did say that. Because mm -hmm. I left. Because I didn't love you. Because yeah. you were a terrible kid. I'm the bad parent. I was disappointed. Yeah. I wanted a girl. And he's like, oh, are you okay? I felt better for a second. And now I don't. <laughs> Not so much. Now Thanks I feel for like promising Billy rolls. Joel and then leaving. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a little extra bit of cruelty there. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And then we cut to Firecracker uh, doing an episode of Truth Bomb, shitting all over Starlight. She's back in her Starlight Baby house. killer. Yeah. She's but good. also Ezekiel killer. Ooh, yeah. Mm. Just Wait for Ezekiel. Star, uh, Firecracker sent me. Those are the messages spray painted all over the Starlight house. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's throwing Starlight into a spiral. Mm -hmm. uh, we cut to M.M.'s daughter who has been suspended for fighting from school. And we get the whole, I learned it from you, dad. Uh, cause she beat up, girl. she beat up a, a Homelander basically. Mm -hmm. And Monique, his ex-wife is, is very angry. This girl has changed teamer. quickly because mm -hmm. what was it last season? She was having a birthday party that was the seven themed mm -hmm. Homelander was her favorite. I'm sure Todd had something to do with that. Yeah. But now, but now she's like this boy at school said Homelander's the best. And I told him what was what? Well, her buddy Todd got murdered. So now she's against it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's going to be militarized by MM now. She'll be a member of the boys in no time. I wonder what he went and talked to her because Monique was like, talk to her right now. This ends today. And then we don't get to see how I know it happened. This is an interesting choice. He did, said, he, did he walk in and be like, hey, girl, if you don't find anybody, I'll get you a McFlurry. He said, fist bump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <they just laughs> Good nuts. job. Good job. They dabbed up in a room. and <laughs> He, was, he, he was said, like, next time you do it, just don't get caught. Don't get caught. I'll show you how to you hit put, them where they won't show. Yeah, You put oranges in a sock. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Maybe. Soap. It's soap, Steve. I don't know about oranges. Is that oranges? I don't know. It's, it's two for one. You beat up somebody and then you have juice. <laughs> <laughs> then you have a snack after. Yeah, right. Yeah. Socky juice. <laughs> you clean the sock first. <laughs> of course, you only use clean socks. Only. Preferably never worn. And then we cut to a scene between Kessler, which is Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Morgan for Steve. JDM. <laughs> yep. In my notes, JDM. That's yep. what he is in mine. Mm -hmm. Kessler JDM. and Butcher are talking. Uh, he has a really funny line here that made me chuckle quite a lot because you could never use it in the real world, but like it's so fire. Uh, cause he's like, why are we meeting in a fucking park? And he's like, well, I wanted to meet in your mom's pussy, but I thought we should be somewhere more private. <laughs> I couldn't even say it without laughing. <laughs> and and Butcher's the type way. of guy that's like, you know, like he kind of chuckles. That yeah, like, was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> fucking diabolical. Fuck, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Call Huey a gaping wet pussy later, please. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all of my con Which, contribution to this scene's analysis. I, I, so I, so the, I got this thought in this episode, and maybe this is something we talked about later, but I, or earlier, but I don't remember. But JDM's all in his head, right? This is a Fight Club thing, right? That's what you think? Yeah. That's your theory? Ooh. Yeah. Because I don't think so. We've only seen him in scenes with Butcher, and no one else talks to, like, huh. he hasn't interacted with anyone but Butcher, and we already know Butcher's hallucinating his wife, Becca. Mm hmm. Hmm. That so would be that, a but, cool. So I didn't pick up Twist. on I didn't pick up on this at this moment in the episode. It was a, it was later in this episode. Where I'm like I don't think JDM's actually there. I think this huh. is a hallucin hallucination. Um, but I wanted to throw that out there Interesting. now. So when we talk about him throughout the episode, maybe you guys can look at it through that lens because mm. I think that's where they're going with it. Okay, that's cheating because he's a real character in the comics. So that would be oh. unfair to comic book readers. Well, it, not well, to- Unless I don't remember that he's fake there too, but I don't think so. Not to flash forward, but it does kind of make a little little bit of sense when he just randomly shows up at the barn when mm -hmm. uh, he cut off Samir's leg, right? Yeah, that, that, that's where it was. Because when they, when he's talking to Samir at the bar or in the barn, it's like he's not talking to Samir and Samir's not talking to him. They're only talking mm -hmm. to Butcher and not each other. And that's yeah. where I was thinking, like, I don't think he's there. Huh. Interesting. Um, yeah. That's just, I'm curious. I, I like do that. like, I do like that. Yeah. I like that lens. Hmm. Interesting. Did not. But that would mean that he's up. doing all of this for nothing then too. Like if he had, so. well, if he had knocked Ryan out, he would need someone to take Ryan and do what they said they were going to do with him. Mm -hmm. So if it's not real, then he would have just knocked him out and well, laid him in a room. I mean, and maybe, like, maybe it's this he's idea. He's going to teach you everything you need to know. <laughs> Fucking who? Let me. <laughs> Other dad's crazy. <laughs> maybe it's like a good angel, like bad angel. Oh, yeah. Like maybe. his yeah. wife. Yeah. Because she's always yeah. like, don't do that. Yeah. She's yeah. the. the, the <laughs> I was. I got that, soda on my finger. That makes sense, though, because. <laughs> you just like licking your that finger. That wasn't in character. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense, though, because Butcher is this character that's capable of being a huge twat a but twat. also there's good yeah. in him like even in this scene he like sticks up for kamiko he's like hey kamiko's cool like i don't want to kill her he's not a monster he's just he's a motherfucker he's a motherfucker like mm says mm -hmm. so like becca his vision of becca is like like you said the the good angel on the shoulder and, and uh kessler 
JDM is yeah. the bad. <laughs> this is the bad. Is the demon yeah. on his other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's just like in his head, he's unsure where he lies. So yeah, no, I like mm. that. Honestly, I hope that's true. <laughs> I like this more than where I thought it was going. I like this. I mean, the theory's it's good. It's a strong one. Good job, Steve. I well, good don't job. don't say good job yet. It's probably well, gonna no, be still, like, I think it's he's like, gonna show up next episode. Like, I got SWAT Team Six with me. Let's go. <laughs> Is this your rings like, of power moment. <laughs> Oh, where I call Rings of Power? Yeah. Starlight's yeah. like, who the fuck's this guy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Oh, hey, Jeffrey. Walking five. Dead? <laughs> She's like, are you married to Sawyer from One Tree Hill? Weird. <laughs> uh, the but, comedian? I love Watchmen, dude. <laughs> the point of this scene, I feel like, is, is the part where he tells him he's gone soft. You know, you've only got six months left to live. It's your last chance to get Homelander, and you, you choose this moment to go soft. And that kind of gets under Butcher's skin, you know? Mm-hmm. He's uh, affected by that. And we see that a little bit later, but we cut to Kamiko and Frenchie. They both lie about, you know, again, I'm exhausted with this at this point. It's three. I've told you for years, and I think you have many times as well. I'm sure my biggest pet peeve in storytelling is two characters that just refuse to talk about something and it would all be solved if they did. Yeah. That's my least favorite cl- conflict of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're five episodes into Kamiko and Frenchie just who, by the way, only have each other only and only ever other. have. All of a sudden, they're not, they're choosing not to do that. Right. Yeah. And it's like, that uh, is the most frustrating thing. And Frenchie has known he's a murderer throughout all five seasons. And yeah. now it's just too much to bear. I, I guess because he, you know, was confronted by one of the victims, but that's sure. Kamiko has known that she, you know, anyway, it just, it bothers me. But yeah. well, and it's also like of the people that are going to understand them the most, it's each other. So it's like, I, I understand. It's, it's a frustrating, it's a frustrating plot point for no reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Starlight asks where Colin is and Frenchie gets really upset about that. Oh, he's going a little down. I call you a cunt, but you've neither the depth nor the warmth. Oh, God, I love that. That's another. (laughs) I wrote that down because that is another good one. one. It's a good one. Um, And Butcher knows now that there was a virus that kills soups only developed at Godolkin University, which is the whole plot of Gen V. uh, And that Newman has it now. And uh, they decide that they uh, they all agree as a group that so, they need to get it from her. So I'm going to interject here because I have not seen Gen V. Mm-hmm. Nor have so I. So Newman got the virus in Gen V, right? Mm-hmm. We did not see that ha- this happen correct. in The Boys, correct? Correct. Okay. Because when they, they even showed it in the recap and they showed like... Um, like a piece of Gen V in the recap? Yeah. And I... and. There was a there was a piece of the Gen V and I was like I don't remember that happening. That had to have been in Gen V. But, so okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, that was I'm the glad whole plot that of that I show. Didn't black out and just forget part and of the show. And Sam and Kate, the two characters that you meet that are in the the room with the seven randomly, are characters yeah. from Gen V. I watched the last scene of Gen V in anticipation <laughs> for this, so I was like, I just oh, threw this up in my the, mouth. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was rushing. I get it. We got That's screeners early. Rushing or dragging? I'm, not my fucking tempo. Uh, <laughs> No, we got screeners before, like, or wait, which was great. It actually worked out great for us, but it was way earlier than I had planned out watching everything. So I'm like, ah, I can't watch Envy. Yeah. So. I do recommend it, though. There's some great performances in, in New Character. You would love it. It, it. looks fun. I've, I think I've watched the first couple of episodes, but it's been kind of sporadic, and I've seen some things since then. But it's it's pretty wild from the shit it. that I've seen, or at least the opening, the, op- the first episode itself is just fucking insane. I think it's a fun time. Yeah. Uh, but Butcher tells M.M., he needs a presidential pardon to make this plan work. And that's where the scene cuts. Anybody else have anything on the old argument at the at the headquarters? Uh, we cut to uh, Firecracker and her film Firecracker Lord's Soldier. <laughs> She's singing Carry Me Jesus, all yeah. that stuff. This is a new part of the, the Vaught Faith segment of their, Expo. I think, TV programming. Yeah. Oh, um, man. If, if this was a real world thing, I can see it now. You'd be at the, because I used to work at the movie theater and every now and then the Christian films would play. There's a lot of them actually. There, well, now there's there there's a ton of them, but like back when I worked in the movie theater, there'd be like one every six months or so. Like they weren't hmm. nearly as prevalent, but they were huge when they did because like every Sunday you'd see school buses of people come coming in droves and they'd sell out the, the three showings we had of it and then it wouldn't sell it all the rest of the week. <laughs> but, Gosh. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's, every time I go to buy, sometimes when I, Go get, get movie tickets. I'll search showtimes and just see what's playing mm-hmm. at all because that's how you can see the early screenings and stuff the easiest because they're yeah. always on certain days anyway. And I'll see all these movies I've never heard of and I'm like, oh shit, that sounds wild. And some people hop in my comment sections every now and then, like, oh, 
Why aren't you reviewing Candle of Freedom? Huh? Huh? Why aren't you revealing God's shining light? Who paid you, Hillary? Oh. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you sponsored by Biden? I don't know what that movie is, but it sounds terrible. That's probably why I'm not. Yeah. It's not. It's fucking great. Yeah. But if the Academy wants to keep hiding info from the people, they're not going to give that an Oscar. And I look up the movie and it's like, uh, six evil liberals uh, infiltrate <laughs> a pizzeria hiding their adrenochrome. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> no wonder I didn't know about this movie. Twelve evil liberals go <laughs> to our libraries and hide porn in the kids section. <laughs> That's the sequel film. Yeah. They just doubled. They doubled <laughs> and they're horny <laughs> now. There's nothing worse than a horny liberal. <laughs> that, I mean, but that, to your point, because a lot of people have been talking about like they think the, the commentary has been too on the no nose with the shelves. Mm -hmm. The Knowles. The Knowles. <laughs> and in a way, like, I, I agree it is on the nose, but I kind of think you have to make it on the nose if you're trying to tell the story. Because if you went and just made up shit, people would be like, well, that's not believable. Mm -hmm. Because if you had told me 10 years ago some of the shit that's going on presently, I would be like, who wrote that? That's bad. That's bad writing. Yeah. No, that's really what's happening. It's fucking stupid. And so, like, I get that they why they're using real world instances, because I think if they try to make it make it up, it would be even worse. If that yeah. makes sense. Well, it's almost kind of like I'd rather them commit fully to mm -hmm. the bit than like be half and half. And yeah. then you're kind of like left. Oh, were they making fun of this or were they making fun of that? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I like it. I, I think although it's quote unquote on the nose, I still think it's still very effective to what the boys is as a show. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And we get to, so we get vault faith uh, and we cut to Sage <laughs> seemingly knows that it was a train uh, that stole the footage. Right. She makes a little jab at him about somebody just ran right out work? with it. Right. Yeah. A little jabber work. <laughs> Uh, and then we cut to Butcher and M.M. visiting Stan Edgar in M. prison. An itchy boy. I loved this. And uh, they give him the presidential pardon. That's what that was for. Which, by the way, they got that presidential pardon so quick. Yeah, they did. That was just a nice little, like, email they sent. Hey, <laughs> please send PDF. To whom this may concern. Thanks. Yeah, to whom this may concern. I love Stan Edgar. I'm so happy to see him back. Just the Me too. Just when he entered the room... And he's just looking at him. He's like, I have pottery class in 10 minutes. Oh, he's so good. And he's actually kind of like really that. excited to be there. <laughs> I told you what I met him. I was I like, like hey, go. John Carlo. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. How I, are you? I'm just smiling so big. <laughs> he just zipped right by me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he said hello. I love, I love that guy. That. Pretty sure it was to me. <laughs> I would watch anything with him in it. He's just, I just love how pointed he is with his Well, delivery. that will be tested very soon. Because he's in a movie with like The Rock and somebody else on Netflix coming soon. Red um, mm. something. <laughs> it's not Red Notice. Not red. <laughs> very much. It's kind of is. You know, it's like that. Uh, but basically, they say, "Hey, in exchange for getting us the virus, because you're you, basically Victoria Newman's a daughter to him." Um, and they convince him by telling him that she shot up Zoe with Compound V, and that they'll get him custody of Zoe, his granddaughter. He's like, "Oh, oh, oh really? Mm. I like the prospect of this." And then he just gangsters on out of prison. You know, I don't know. Looking so cool. How does he get oh, so? Yeah. Good? How do he look so cool? Do you have a towel I can place over the seat? How are your clothes so fresh? They've been in a, a, a freeze. You know, what's it called? Uh, when you suck all the air out of a bag? A vacuum seal? Yeah, it's been in a vacuum seal bag for mm -hmm. months. And the man has contingency plans upon contingency. I need a plans. fresh. $10,000 suit. In the event I get out. And a scarf. I need to look fly. Mr. Edgar, it's not cold out. I need a fucking scarf that goes with the suit. <laughs> I need a scarf and gloves. In case I need to sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> the scarf. Okay. <laughs> not a dick, Steve. That's what my brain went to. <laughs> it's prison. I have contingency plans upon contingency plans. <laughs> I need a tube of Vaseline. <laughs> Don't fight. <laughs> Don't fight. <laughs> Don't I see fight. you dropped the soap. Pick your battles. <laughs> you don't want to step to me at the yard. I am lubed and ready. If you want to go, meet me at Peter Beach. <laughs> Armed and ready. <laughs> Damn right. Oh. Any hoozle, he agrees to that plan. We cut back to Hugh Jr. and Sr. and Mama. They're all hanging out at the hospital for the first time in, since he was six years old as a family, uh, reminiscing about honeymoons and Acapulco and this and that, the timeshare. Da Vinci Code, walking oh, to, he he loves Paris. Da Vinci to go to Code. Paris. We all love Da Vinci Code. <laughs> 
Dan Brown novel. How can but he's talking about the Tom Hanks movie, which movie, is so much funnier. Yeah. yeah. He's talking about what they did to Tom Hanks' head in that movie. <laughs> that mullet, that skull. Oh, it's almost man. a skull. It. Skull it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then mom gives Huey her engagement ring to give to Annie. Lock that shit down. Lock that, that shit down. I thought that was very yeah, cute. You're a dork. You can never do better than her. Yeah, this was the first episode. I'm like, all right, Huey's mom. Yeah. Like warm, she, I'm warming up to you. Yeah, she was she, she was a little sus at the beginning. I'm not going to lie. I thought there was some alternate like motives there, but I don't know. I don't know if maybe we still haven't seen that yet, but she's mm -hmm. she's packing some punches with some cool mom shit. This I, one, yeah. this moment is one of them. I wouldn't be surprised if there's still an ulterior motive, but yeah. at least she's got a heart of gold. Yeah. She's like, maybe it's like against her will or mm. beyond her reasoning or something. Yeah. Or it's all part of the plan. Or she's to really. Warm to Huey. I paid her <laughs> from prison. Yes. <laughs> I met her in prison. Yes. <laughs> she's secretly a home teamer mm. that oh. Homelander is paying to. Oh, that would break my heart. Yeah. Um, and then the dad explains his DNR order and why he gave power of attorney to the mother. Like you wouldn't have the, the cojones to end my life. Like I would like it to be. In fact, I'm kind of sad right now I'm alive. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a little over it. So yeah. I'm not going to lie. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have the flavor pizza rolls. I but want at home. I eat pizza rolls every <laughs> night for dinner. I haven't had a woman in 16 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You, thank you for saving my life, son. What's the, what's, <laughs> what's the Pierce Brosnan show he's always watching? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, can't, I can't think of a single Pierce Brosnan movie other than that Netflix one. And no, it's a TV Cold show. Night. Remington Steel. The guy hey. that plays in Mamma Mia? Yeah, yes. I love, I love that Mamma Mia is your cultural no, touchstone for Pierce Brosnan. I love how whenever you guys are talking about... <laughs> A really <laughs> famous, influential actor or actress. My, what was the last one that you did? I don't me? know, but I remember you guys being like, that's what you remember him from. <laughs> it was Carl Urban, I think, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah I said was. Ghost Ship. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. The guy from Ghost Ship. <laughs> like, Such what? a good movie. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I actually, that happened to me when Donald Sutherland died. I turned in my cinephile card and they tore it up because I was sitting oh. there thinking... Because everybody online was like, oh, my God, Invasion, Invasion of the Body, Body Snatchers, Snatchers. Clute. Uh, and they were going on and on and on. And honestly, I haven't seen any of those. And oh. I was thinking of Buffy the Vampire Slayer the whole time. Oh, like, the movie version? Yes. Whoa. Yes. Wow. <laughs> honestly, I think if you were brave enough to post that one, people would have like, hell yeah, Chris. My <laughs> immediate cut. thought was he was the dad in the Italian job. Wow. Oh, man. I would have thought you would have gone President Snow. Oh, yeah. He was in that, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was. Hey, my palette's just different. With the age games. I, I get I get the different versions of these actors that you guys watch. Well, now whenever I see Pierce Brosnan, my first thought will be the guy from Mamma Mia. Yes! The guy from Mamma Mia. He would appreciate that, I he think. Would. Yeah. yeah, he would actually prefer yeah. that, I think. Uh, but Stan Edgar in the next scene, he takes the boys to one of his old properties that he, you know, whatever he does, what did dirt. And he said, look, if Victoria, I don't hate the smell. I don't come here for fun. But if Victoria was up to any shenanigans, it would be here. Do I you, hate farming. Do you like my scarf? I had to sit on it the whole ride. Because <laughs> I don't know if I made it clear. <laughs> the scarf. It's foul. Just to be clear, you just, you I'm see talking one of the about security the scarf. guys bringing like this long <laughs> mirror and he's like chucking himself out in the mirror, making mm -hmm. sure he looks good. Would anyone like to buy some meth? <laughs> it's in the barn. Just let me know. Uh, I am the plug. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it looks it looks like an episode of Dexter in that house. A little bit. I was yeah. getting Dexter vibes. Um, Where was the dark passenger? I don't know. <laughs> Can we just cover Dexter next? That'd be fun. <laughs> Um, and I, I gotta say the giant Sharpie tape that said temp V was a little overkill on the rabbit, but I get it, you know, in case anybody's confused oh, about sorry. what's in the Did tube. Did you mean Mr. Fuzzy Buzzy? Mr. Fuzzy Buzzy getting shot up with temp V and Butcher frees the bunny and Kamiko sees that and she's like, nice. He is a motherfucker. <laughs> but also this is kind of like the moment where he's like. Why am I doing that? I'm not a nice guy. Fuck this. I'm fucking diabolical. I'm diabolical. I'm going to stomp this bunny to I'm shit later. I'm scary spice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they've been testing the virus, I presume, on all of these animals. Victoria shows up. She's like, hey, you think I wouldn't know what's your ankle monitor? I'm a fucking vice president. Why did you turn my rec room into a virology lab? <laughs> Shut up. I do what I want. <laughs> Dad. Um, Are you upset she, that I betrayed you? 
Oh, that was a good line because mm-hmm. she had betrayed him. Yeah. And he wasn't even mad about that, though. He was like, she's just doing what I raised her to do. Mm-hmm. That's a, my girl. Be a fucker. <laughs> I'm really proud. But she doesn't know where Samir is, who we find out later is the father of Zoe. <gasps> but it's also Stan Edgar's old uh, dun, dun. head of shit. At, uh, head of, head of, head of shit. shit. <laughs> That's on his LinkedIn profile H-O-S. page. H-O-S. Head H-O-S. of shit. Um, and Stan tells her, you should use these guys. If nothing else, they're great cannon fodder. Uh, but they're pretty useful in a pinch as well. I'm still doing the Stan Edgar voice slightly when I talk now. <laughs> can't stop. You got, you're stuck in it It's now. a terrible impression to begin with, but I've got my own thing going on now. Mm-hmm. I like, kind of like the timbre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's nice to be pointed and concise. I wish I had a scarf. I think I'll get you one. It'll be hot. I'll sit on it, maybe. Uh, <laughs> the scarf. Yes. <laughs> This episode of Streaming Things is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp. You know, Steve, is there something I need to get off my chest? What's that, fella? It's been weighing on me. You know that I resigned at the day job recently, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been a little scared. There's a family to worry about. There's health insurance. There's Mm -hmm. capitalism. Sounds like a stressful time. But we all carry around different stressors, big and small. It feels better when you bring something to the light and keep them bottled up. It can start to affect us negatively. And therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest and to figure out how to work through whatever's weighing you down. In my case, it's all of the stress, the misery, the fear. But I had to come over here and share that with you. And I felt better. You know, that's a real thing that happened. Yeah. Uh, unloading all that on you and Erica and feeling better myself. That uh, sounds like my Friday night. Sometimes you just need somebody to listen. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. If you're not vibing, that's completely fine. So get it off your chest with better help visit betterhelp.com slash streaming things to get 10 percent off your first month that's better help h-e-l-p.com slash streaming things it's the month of june and it's a very special month because our patreon tiers just got a huge upgrade at patreon.com slash streaming things and i want to thank the very special patrons who signed up to be super patrons of streaming things keeping the lights on for us day in and day out so thank you so much to album stink pot digimon digital monsters with a much longer name but i'm only saying those three words dylan dunkley's stanton valentino Mattelstat, Susie callahan anthony corona parmesan sun Shine, Ashley Hazen, Just Liz Calabria, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Svento7, Jay Scramo, Bloth Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Jer Lektanovich, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Elpander, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Rowe, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Paula Garcia, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things. And with that, let's get back to this episode. We cut to A Train's pandering movie trailer, the one with Will Ferrell from episode, I think it was oh my one. Gosh. Fucking. God, that's, that's funny. God, yeah. Were they worth- taking a shot at Remember the Titans? Is that a pandering movie? Uh- because the soundtrack is the... Uh, Ain't No Mountain High. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, I, that's heavily used in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. And I was Maybe. like, oh, no. But I, I think like it's funny, movie. like, Will Ferrell's commentary is, like, commentary is, like, run commentary. faster than that. He's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> typing him up. He's a good coach. Run faster. And then I think another tagline was, black at it. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the the, uh, the the freeze frame on the trailer is the is the Blind Side poster mm-hmm. where the the their backs looking forward. Yeah, and yep. then it was this part where they were doing like um, specific product placement yes. substitutions for different demographics. So if it was like a white guy, it was like an IPA, and yeah. then if it was for it was a, a peach bl- cognac, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you see, yeah, and I love how they cut away to like the members of the crowd. They're like, like uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> we, people say, go woke, go broke. We say, go woke, get yoked. Get yoked. <laughs> but be- that. before the deep comes out, he's bitching at like the head of the TV division. The Cameron guy, Coleman. I finally figured out his name. The, that's took, the guy who gets four episodes. Mr. Mr. Sub. It took four yeah, seasons, pegged, but I right? finally yeah. remembered his name. <laughs> Which is nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, and deep is about, you know, he's pissed about being pulled from crime analytics. And, um, Why'd you report that shit, bro? I had to do it, bud. 
It's nothing personal. Nothing personal. I, there was one quick aside because they, they have that talk and it cuts back to A-Train who's still hyping up the crowd. And he's like, so this fall, double standard. They just finished their reshoots of their reshoots, <laughs> making it the most expensive television show ever made. So that means it's got to be good, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. All the That's TV good. stuff worked for me so much. It's Yeah, yeah. it's hitting. Yeah. Uh, we've got two black heroes in the seven now and one unspecified. <laughs> so <laughs> black noir. <laughs> so uh, then we cut to the writer, Adam, who's working on a new project for Ryan called Summer School, I think. Super School. Super School. Super School. It's a teen show. And Homelander and Ryan are in there discussing that. Bonnie, one of the assistants, comes in and the, Adam hits on her. Did you Bonnie, get my you, text? You look gorgeous. Did you get my text? <laughs> and she's like, uh, my, you know. Working headphones on. What's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that happens, and then um, Ryan's not digging this teen show idea, right? And Homelander says, "Don't do it if you don't like it." Uh, and Adam's trying to convince him. He's like, "Why don't you give me your black Amex card? <laughs> give me your wallet, your wallet and keys, your Jaguar." I'll give you my wallet. What about the keys to your Jaguar? Yeah, I would be a love to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and Ryan still says no, right? So he's like, "All right, don't do it then." And out light, outside in the hallway, they have they have a chat and Homelander's like, I'm so sorry that I've been treating you the way I've been treating you. I've been manipulated my whole life and I didn't even realize that I was doing that to you. Live your own life. Do whatever you want to do. Right. Did Homelander learn a lesson? It's it seems shockingly like, seems so. Mm -hmm. I, I was pleasantly surprised at how much I liked this interaction, especially because I, I think, I mean, Homelander's a piece of shit, but... Yeah, even with him learning a lesson, he still manages to be a piece yeah. of shit because he's like, it's worse than slavery. We're both going to be emancipated from slavery, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, but, what a dick. Yeah. But still, I was like, okay, like he kind of is at least. The bar is so good, low. Yes. Yes. But he's still like <laughs> giving like some decent, not even decent advice, just like acknowledging shit that he went through and doesn't want his kid to go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's he's. He's honestly so royally fucked from ever being a good person. He has no idea, like, he has no waypoint for that. Mm -hmm. But he's trying in his own little weird way, right? Yeah. yeah. And we'll find out very soon how fucked he is. Because even when he's like, attempts to help somebody, it's in a sadistic way. But mm -hmm. yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, but we cut to Stan and Victoria. They're talking about Zoe. Prince Andrew gave me these shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little, little line just to let you know that Stan Edgar is also a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. He hangs out with Prince Ed or Andrew. And then while they're arguing about their different things, they I think it's Butcher that sees somebody like the door to the barn slightly ajar and moving. So they search the barn. They find one of Samir's assistants with his guts blowed out and like a whole nest and eggs laid in there. And they're like, what the fuck? But it's at that moment that they realize, Veed up chickens! Soup chickens! Uh, uh -huh. It's a Kentucky Fried Massacre. Kentucky Fried fucking massacre. Yep. And then they all fight the chickens. They're bulletproof, apparently. Uh, Victoria Newman uses her powers to save Stan Edgar at the last second from one of the beat up chickens. It looked like one of the like when you're playing a video game and like the the farm animals are like you can't shoot them because they're you just can't and you're just like but you really want to and you're just like <laughs> the <laughs> chickens and there's just nothing happening. Most video to them. games nowadays you can shoot the chickens. Oh, I know, so, but like my video games, you can't. I think I think these are the chickens from Zelda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, like when you hit the chickens too much, they all up. start fighting you. Can't you pick them up though? You could if before they start fighting you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they uh they 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 hit you in Fortnite too. Really, the chicken? Yeah, but you can shoot them back. Oh, okay. So <laughs> that's only fair. It <laughs> is like, hey, little fucker, <laughs> I have a bazooka, dude. Um, yeah, and by the way, so they're out there arguing after the Kentucky Fried Massacre. And this is where Victoria snitches on Butcher. And she tells the whole crew that he had planned to sell them out to yeah, her. He just gave me a butthole. In exchange for Ryan. I actually neglected to mention that part. Because <laughs> Butcher's got a point. I didn't do it. That means I'm on the level. Which is true. Um, I guess it's not as good as it never occurring to you to betray somebody. But second best thing. Yeah. Uh, but we forgot to mention in the lab itself, there was like a broken vial of compound V that was going into a drain, which mm -hmm. is how it got into the groundwater, which is why all of these animals animals are on V, including the bulls and the sheep and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's it for that scene. Science. We cut to Ashley, who um, accosts Cameron and says, you didn't have permission to take out your vibrating anal beads. Bluetooth <laughs> anal beads. You grubby little queef sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> you scruffy looking nerf herder. <laughs> uh, but he's not Who's scruffy looking. 
He's not turned on anymore because she's not actually in charge. Mm -hmm. She's been demoted and Sage has been promoted. So mm -hmm. I hope we can still be friends. She doesn't do it for me anymore, right? Uh, we cut to Firecracker, who is upset at Sage because she realized that her getting her ass beat by Starlight was the plan the entire time. You just put me out there to get my ass beat. That's fucked up. You think I'm just stupid, poor, white trash. I don't think you're poor. I, I love Sage's line where she's like, now you don't have to play a victim. You can be one. Ooh. You can actually be one for once. Like, mm -hmm. oh, girl, fuck, fire. Okay. And Firecracker's like, I'll shank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Make sure you shank me right, right here in my eye. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, we can cut to Kamiko and MM. Um, there's a brief interchange where I think she asks him to talk to Frenchie, right? Uh, well, I think MM asks her what's going on with Frenchie, and she says, he won't talk to me. You, you try asking yeah. him or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no one is talking about their feelings. Everyone is walking back. With, this is where I kind of got confused. I'll be honest with you guys. Everybody's walking back to where, from where, I have no fucking idea, with blood all over them, and we get some some good interactions, but it's like, why are they all on foot? Where are the, uh, where's the fleet of SUVs they no doubt have? Like, what is every, going on right now? Every farm has some gators. Pause. Do you think they would, like, interject other scenes into this, into the show? Because, I mean, these, I've seen the screener, obviously, but do you think they would input? Because to me, it seems like there's, there's scenes missing, is what it feels like. Not this late. I mean, the show premieres at the, now in a couple of days. Oh, okay. Well, it's, then never mind. it's not impossible, but I, I just think it's it's a weird stage. But I do like, agree. It's just like, I feel like there's scenes missing. Are that. we meant to understand they're looking for Samir or now they're intrigued by the Kentucky fried chickens and they want to like investigate? I like, guess we don't know. <laughs> Cause they're just strolling along. Like they're on vacation together. Well, I also feel like, like if what they is going were, on? If they were looking for someone, they could have split up and like, Covered more ground. Yeah, like they lost know? me here completely. Like these are bitter enemies. Yeah. Uh, they're just like do to do, kicking rocks. The farms are pretty big though. Like, sure. Like there's like there could be a walkable distance between but different areas. I remember of the farm. like making note that Stan Edgar was like, Can we stop and take a second? I'm like, You guys drove there. Why can't you get back in the car and like That's drive what around? I'm saying? Like I'm not arguing that there's plenty of square footage to with which to walk on. It just was a weird Why premise. are they walking on? Yeah, it's just a weird premise. I can't find premise. the keys to the gators. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. We misplaced them. This isn't even actually it's too my cold house. for the horse and buggy. Where's my <laughs> scarf? This actually isn't my house. <laughs> I misled you. This is the wrong address. <laughs> Prison brain. <laughs> they just walked in the Dexter's Prison house brain. accidentally. Oh. Prison brain. But anyway, uh, Newman shits on Starlight and says, hey, I saw you had a little projectile Jeez. dysfunction over there. She can't use her powers. Happens to most men. And Starlight ends up fucking punching her, which is so out of character. What is going on right now? She's she's so off put by what's going on with Firecracker, I guess. Yeah. Um, and Newman's like, <laughs> you really got your shit locked down. Kid. Yeah. Which is to say she doesn't. You just punched that. the VP elect of the United States of yeah, America. For, wouldn't Secret Service just like shoot Starlight in the face? Right. For sure. You no. treasonous bitch. We're still thinking about the chickens. We don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Again, it's like I I don't really know how to feel about because I really enjoy Annie as a character and I like her as Starlight and I like what she was for. But now I just feel like she's kind of like. Yeah, they're, they're not doing just, a service to her. No, this no. Yeah. A lot of what's going on with her is very random and. By the way, oh, do you guys want some tea that you might not know? You probably do. Is it hot? Did you, not really. Did no. you know that Claudia uh, Dumit, who plays Victoria Newman, is Jack Quaid's girlfriend? What? They're dating. Wait, say that again. So Newman and Huey are an item in real life. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Love it. Well, I knew Jack Quaid was serious with somebody. In a comment section or something. And I was I like, knew, oh, really? I knew he was serious with someone, but I didn't know it was with Oh, it's the Claudia. vice president. Hell yeah. Get mm -hmm. it, Huey. That's <laughs> I'm saying. I hope he calls her Madam President. Madam Remember President. that the whole year you had to call me Mr. President? I did, and there. I never did. And now. <laughs> <laughs> we could have used that, you know? Mr. President. I would have kid. called you Madam President. To spice so. things up. And then at this point, they all walk away after the punching, and Butcher finds the bunny that he freed earlier. Mr. Fuzzy Buzzy. And stomps it out. I, love the, I like that you can remember monster. the bunny's name, but not Jeffrey D. Morgan's character. JDM, no. <laughs> He stomps it out. It does have tentacles. Yeah. But I also thought it was symbolic, right? Like, I try to do something nice. And this mm -hmm. is what happens every bloody time. It becomes a weird 
Resident Evil monster. Every bloody time. <laughs> it's weird. If I had a nickel for every time. I bet that's what's living in me. It'd be 10 cents, but it's weird it happened twice. <laughs> <laughs> but weird to assume that he's got a tentacle monster. Fucking yeah. diabolical. Well, I mean, it, it, they kind of like showed the outline oh, of it. Under you're a genius. It kind of showed the outline. <laughs> What I do you mean? Like, I didn't like the inflection Did you, on that. I didn't get it. You didn't I get didn't, it? No, I honestly didn't put it together. The worm stuff from earlier, him passing hmm. out and killing Ezekiel. You're making the connection right he now, live? He definitely has a tentacle monster. Yeah. Yep. An absolute tentacle monster. And he's monster. like, that's, yeah. that's what I have on the And that's rabbit. why he like stomp cribbed the shit out of it. He went he was, full Lenny on that yeah, rabbit. Because he was mad. He's like, fuck, that's, that's what's inside of me. <laughs> went full Lenny on it, yep. Yep. I just wanted to pet the rabbits, George. I'm going to show up my grapes of wrath. <laughs> it's the wrong novel. Same yeah. guy. <laughs> Get my Steinbecks confused. <laughs> I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> Time to catch the rye. He <laughs> just always off color literature references. I'd be here for it. <laughs> and then we cut to back at the V52 Expo Tech Night. The guy who has a an extensive role in Gen V, one of a, a, a soup that has a big role in Gen V, has a bit a bit of time on stage talking about his newest movie, the reboot. A year later, <laughs> and it's been a whole year. I think we're time for a reboot. <laughs> and uh, during that, A Train talks to Ashley and says that he needs help. He tells her the truth that he's the one that snuck out the file, and she's like, "I took one shit in his toilet. I'm not joining the fucking Rebel Alliance." <laughs> That's a great line. He's like, "You know, damn well you've done more than take a shit, and I'll, I'll, if I go down, you go down with me." So I don't even know what he's talking about, but I'm like, "Got her." Yeah. Sure. Uh, we cut to Huey, who comes back to the uh, not hotel but hospital room. He can't find his dad. Mom thought he was with him. Uh, where they find him all Blair Witch in a different hospital room. All oh, Blair, oh, Blair Witch. Yeah, he's like standing in the corner. And yeah, no, I got it. That's <laughs> good reference. And uh, good. he's holding a dude's heart. He what? did a oh, fatality. Shit. He did, accidentally. And uh, he doesn't know who Huey is and ends up running through the wall. Huh? And then so he can like phase between atoms. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> uh, he runs through a dude who's just trying to get laid from a nurse, he's which is inappropriate, late, but late probably not bed. worth getting exploded. No. But he does say, I'm a nice guy, which is an indicator that he's not. Yeah. So I wasn't too sad. And, um, but it was cool. He like walked through the wall and then he walked through the person and pre materialized. Just fucking exploded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which if you're if you're if you're in a situation where you don't know what's happening to you and you can't control your powers and you can't remember where you are and that's happening to you, oh. I would totally get his like ah! <laughs> Oh, it's awful. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lots of people would go down trying to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. He thinks Huey is eleven years old because him and his mother confront uh Huey Sr. They are not able to convince him that they're family until he does recognize his ex wife, Daphne, right? Daphne? Mm -hmm. And he's super angry at her because he's when Huey was 11, his feelings about his ex at that time were more very different. Of, one of pain and fury. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he rips out the security guard's heart because he's realized recently he's he like, can do that. that. Yeah. Moin. Moin. <laughs> uh, and then it's, it turns into a horror movie. You're tearing with out my heart, Daphne. <laughs> I'm tearing out this guy's heart, Daphne. Instead of the room reference? Yeah. You're tearing me apart. <laughs> uh, oh, hi, Huey. And then back at the V52, oh, we meet the Guardians of Godolkin, Sam and Kate. Um, I'll never not laugh at that was Godolkin. So Godolkin, you. Godolkin. God, God you. Godolkin sounds like a phrase that we used. Did you ever watch Cannibal the Musical? No. It was uh, the South Park creator's first movie. I feel like but, that's only something you would watch. Oh, it's, it's oh, Andy would watch it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but one of the, the songs in that musical is Have a Spadoinkle Day. So every time they say oh. Godolkin, I'm just like, I, I know <laughs> that word. Have a Godolkin day. <laughs> um, and then the deep says that he's going to fuck Cameron's wife. <laughs> a late night muff dive. <laughs> and I've got gills, so I'll never have to come up for I'm air. Deep. I'll, I'll breathe straight through those juices. <laughs> <laughs> and then he tells him he'll uh, expose him for his, you know, eight hand jobby creature. Ambrosia. Yeah, Ambrosia, Ambrosia's? essentially. I'll have that slapped together and Tilda on the air Swinton. tonight. Oh my God, you wouldn't. Right. So, yeah, be civilized. Uh, and then Ryan tells Homelander, he's like, hey, we'll do whatever you want, son, whatever you want to do. If you're going to laugh at me, I want to actually help people, not just like, you know, fake saves. saves. Yeah, not fake saves, right. real ones. Yeah. And he goes, you want to help her? Because Adam's in the background creeping on Bonnie again. And they make Adam apologize and it's continually escalated. I don't think he means it. So he tells him to get on his knees. 
And eventually they have Bonnie slap him. And she just fucking she's, unleashes. Yeah, she's, she's not holding beats back. The piss out of it. I counted thirteen slaps before the yeah. scene cut, and we're led to believe Damn. it continued. I I do I did get a little bit of comedy from the scene because Adam's like, I'm sorry, and they're like, it didn't seem like that was you know. Well, he does you, say you like a memorized like, apology. Oh, oh, sorry, that's just my natural cadence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm an asshole. I'm sorry if I exploited our inequitable power dynamic. Exactly. That yeah. was like corporate speak. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For, yeah. But Homelander, fi- he, and he, Homelander loves this because he finally found a way to connect to his son. To get- I can be sadistic and Ryan's into it now. Yeah, Let's like, go. As long as I now he has an in because before he was trying to give Ryan all the things he never had as a child. Like here are all these toys, milkshakes. here are all these milkshakes, here's all this money and fame and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And Ryan doesn't want that. Oh, he wants to help people. Oh, I can work with this. Yeah. So it's kind of a, oh, no, he finally figured it out. This is rough. Yeah. It's like a weird reverse psychology type thing. And they all mm-hmm. are drinking milkshakes. Mm. Good boys get the milkshakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not Adam. Uh, we cut to Annie and Frenchie, and he's got a rosary. And, you know, a little on the nose that his his guilt is Catholicism based, right? They got the Catholic guilt. Of course it is. He asks her if she still believes in God, and she says she wants to. And he's like, basically, I laughed because he's basically says, I love the lore, which I agree. Like, I'm really into the movie Constantine. It's way better than Data. Sure. Uh, like, I like the, the Christian mythology. Yeah. You know, I think it's interesting. Mm-hmm. He's like, I love all that shit, but not the forgiveness. Right. So he doesn't believe in that aspect of it. Some things God should not forgive. That's right. And she's like, what? And I love how Starlight is not helpful at all. What did you do? <laughs> you should talk to someone You should talk else. to someone. Not me. <laughs> She pulls an auto high tower. Go fuck. <laughs> Go fuck Kristen Cole. I wish it seems not, to work with everyone I, else in this family. I do not wish to hear of it. I do not. <laughs> don't make me listen to it. Uh, but Your Frenchie. He's scared Kamiko, Kamiko will hate him, but he's even more scared that she won't. Mm. Mm. And I read that like he hates himself so much that he would judge anybody who mm. forgave him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like if she's like, I still love you. He'd be like, Ugh, murderer lover. Oh, I thought you were cool. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, is that a veed up bull? Is that a veed up bull? It is indeed. But then my next note is not the sheep. <laughs> the, the sheep all fly in and rip the bull apart. And then they rip up red shirt too. Who says it's happening to me again? <laughs> <laughs> no. What? I didn't, I didn't call it that. Somebody says it's happening to me again. And then everybody looks at him like, what? <laughs> when has this happened before? I didn't clock that. Yeah, I think it's Frenchy. Oh, oh, oh. Was it from when he was hallucinating the ducks floating oh, around? Oh, probably. Oh, maybe. There you go. That's what I... That's <laughs> I knew it was I, a I remember, drug reference, I but... I remember thinking that when that happened, yeah. That's funny. But in the next barn that they hide in, it's Samir in there. We find out he's Zoe's dad. Um, a veed up hamster was your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that's, everybody knows that you don't V up a hamster. Uh, they talk about how the V got into the groundwater. Um, and, uh, how is the virus transmitted? Butcher asks, and he said, it's through bodily fluids like blood or mucus or semen. And they said, Hey, we got to, uh, inject this body and then Dead leave Henry. it out there so that the sheep will get infected. And Frenchie says, this man is in no condition to fuck a sheep. <laughs> 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 that was the joke that I wasn't proud of. That got that was me. still so good. Yeah, that one got me too. And they all looked at well, me Well, because like, that's just French, how Frenchie thinks. It's just funny. But not only that, but Giancarlo's cadence and saying, <sighs> <laughs> the sheep are going to eat him, you know? <laughs> oh, oh, we. we. <laughs> uh, and then the butcher goes on his whole, like, Darwinism, baby. You don't have to be the fastest, just not the slowest. And he's got that, like, glint in his eye, and they're like, and then Starlight jumps on him. You're a monster. And this is when M.M.'s like, I got hives. I'm sick of all you fighting. And there's this, it's corny, kind of, because there's this big speech, and then, like, the vice oh, president. motherfucker with a heart. That's good. I'm just saying the whole bit where he's able to, like, emotionally reach the vice president and stuff with this. She doesn't even know you. She doesn't care you have stress from her emotional issues, you know? Yeah. But she's got this look on her face that's like... He's got a point. He's got a point. We got to get along, guys. We're stressing him out. <laughs> I don't know. We can't give this guy more hives. No. I, I like this guy. Uh, so they inject the body. They throw it outside. All right. And then the hospital back there is on red alert. Um, and we've, you know, Huey talks about how we already know V can sometimes have a, an extremely abnormal reaction in a, in a, in a, you know, normal person. And 
dad was brain dead at the time that he was injected. So this is the cause of all of the issues that we're currently going through. This made me wonder, so, because they posit that the V is doing weird things to him because he was brain dead when they injected the V. So what happens? Well, I guess... He already had, I was going to say like what happens when someone has a brain tumor, but he's already, but he, he has the brain tumor from the V. I'm talking about Butcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then at that point, the dad runs in and it's kind of cool because the mom doesn't know that Huey works for the CIA and has been fighting the soups for years. So she's just like, you are strangely calm right now. You know, he's like, <laughs> eh, I had a little more experience than you would think. Uh, and dad runs in and we get the whole bit where, you know, you're my hero, dad. You know, that's why I couldn't let you die. I wanted to tell you. Mm -hmm. he, Huey. Right. Uh, and then Huey's like, I think I know what to do. Kill him. He's going to charge. <laughs> that was the obvious hard. plan, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, we cut to the the sheep take the bait and then they get in the bar and they all have to run outside. <laughs> they, th th this whole sequence is so weird to me because they throw the body out there. They're they're peeking outside. They eat it up like, oh, good. And then they're slamming on the roof. Oh, no, they're going to get in. And then like two just of them dropping just dead. wander in like, oh, hey, the <laughs> door was open. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. We're just sheep. Bah. <laughs> yeah, the vampire sheep. They run outside and then they get Kamiko gets confronted. And but at the last second, the, the sheep just vomits all its shit up and dies because the virus took effect. Uh That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the sheep Blah. vomiting? Blah. <laughs> and uh Newman freaks out. Where's where's Samir? Where's Nobody Samir? saw Samir. Oh my god. And uh they tell Edgar no virus, no deal. So they send him back to prison. <laughs> this was my favorite part of the episode. <laughs> the, the, I don't know, FBI, whatever, government person shows up. We couldn't find Samir. We found this, though. Flashlight. <laughs> Leg in a bag. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted you to confirm, is this his leg? She's just nods. <laughs> oh, my God. I, th I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Yep. We couldn't find him. We did find this weird thing, though. <laughs> Can you help us figure out what this weird thing is? It okay. does look familiar. He does wear those shoes. I've had my legs wrapped around it many times. <laughs> does he have an owl tattooed on his foot? Yeah, it's like it could be anybody's leg. Mm. Um, those are Prince Albert's shoes. <laughs> That's where they went. <laughs> Some uh, bitch took my daughter and my shoes. And then Edgar driver Edward uh, excuse me Edgar's driver's head explodes, and Newman saved her daddy. I'm not ready for you to go back to prison. I've lost mm. Samir. I need you now again. Mm -hmm. and he's got his little kerchief, wipes the blood off. Uh, we cut to Homelander's speech to all the heroes of the seven and the two from Godolkin University. And uh, he says, we have to save America. We have to save the world for our kids. No more beloved celebrities. We will be wrathful gods. Will you answer the call? Yeah, totes. Gondor totally calls for Homelander. aid. And Rohan will answer. I am <laughs> Rohan. Uh, and this <laughs> metaphor... <laughs> and then uh, we found the leak and A-Train's getting all sweaty, but it is the Cameron, the TV exec guy. Um, I don't know who Mother's Milk is. <laughs> is Marvin that a Milk. He called him Marvin Milk, um, which is his name, but still it's funny to hear him say it. <laughs> and then they all kind of group stomp that guy. Patriots, show me a little rap. I'm still going to fuck your wife tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing he heard on yeah. Earth. That sucks. Then they yeah. stop a mud hole in Coleman and walk it dry. <laughs> oh, JR. Oh, yeah, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stomping a mud hole. <laughs> the deep. <laughs> <laughs> by God, he's going to fuck his wife tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and then Starlight is crying at pictures of Starlight. And Kamiko wants to talk to Frenchie. She texts him like, hey, please. It looks like it's finally that goddamned plot will come to fruition. But no, he's turning himself in. And the cops like, hold on one second. I have murdered many people. I've committed murders, plural. <laughs> we got a code red at the front desk. French guy. We have killer. a code French. Yeah. <laughs> we got a French guy killer. That's the worst. <laughs> the worst kind. And then we cut to Hugh Sr., you know, he's being euthanized. I don't want to be Jar Jar, right? So we had that whole bit just to make sure it's okay with the audience that Huey does this. <laughs> um, and I just it's, want to go see where everywhere Tom Hanks has been. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> I did cry. Wasn't that like his last words? Like, Tom Hanks. Yeah, Tom <laughs> Hanks. I, d I was wondering, like, this is really sad. But how are they going to get out of that hospital <laughs> yeah. without any... Like there are like three, at least three people dead on top well, of this. The guy who's responsible is dead. You know, which guy? What are you, who are you talking about? Hugh Senior. Well, is he? What do you mean? What do you mean? Get get out of the hospital? Like 
Well, I feel like there would be at least a lot of paperwork they would have to fill out. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Fair. for sure. Fair. I'm saying in the, Maybe some lawsuits. in the universe, I right. can see where it's like, we don't know what happened. You just start ripping hearts out. Weird. I didn't know strokes could do that. And then we found him in here and he died. It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. crazy did you euthanize him? No. no did not, not do that. I wouldn't even know which mm. one of these would do that. I'm just Petit Huey. Look at me. I like <laughs> I, pizza rolls. Yeah, I was just about to say that. <laughs> Uh, and we cut to Butcher found out that we find out that he took Samir, chopped his fucking leg off to make it look like he was dead. And he needs him to make more okay, of Peter the virus. Your football mm, days are except over. for someone else. Mm. Mm-hmm. Peter Pettigrew cut his own thing off, you know, not his thing, but yeah, his a finger. Pinky. <laughs> Same thing. You left your dick. <laughs> I panicked. I didn't want to go to jail. God, you're the worst. You ever been to Azkaban? That's why they call me Peter. We was, gonna give, we was gonna give you a kiss. Oh no! In Azkaban, yeah, we, come on in. We suck your soul. A little kissy kiss. That's it. That's a callback to our Harry Potter coverage. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of you are confused because you're not real fans. Oh no! You didn't listen to the episodes that the the Mantras were on. That was so terrible. Mm. <laughs> oh well. Uh, that's the end of the episode. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan may or may not be there. Steve's theory is that he's a figment of really Butcher's like imagination. Mm. I really like that. I hate it. You hate um, it? Uh, anything Steve says. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Uh, which brings us to our diabolical moments, our top three favorite moments of the episode. Diabolical. Madison, what is your number three? Ooh, my third favorite is uh, Ryan initiating the assistant to slap the director. Mm-hmm. I think it was because up until this point, Ryan has been pretty like. I don't know. We just haven't seen like this kind of manipulative side of him and or like kind of a little malicious uh, energy. And so I don't know. It was just kind of cool to see him tune into that. And then also Homelander's like eyes widening, being like, oh, so this is how I this is how I relate to my son in this way. How do I reach this kid? And he figured it out. Mm -hmm. My number three is the V52 Expo. Uh, just because I'm a sucker for industry commentary and satire, and I thought like almost every line they delivered for the V52 Expo was really, really funny, all the way down to like the, the I don't know what you call it, the PowerPoint presentations where they're showing the different phases and then the, the ad that they created in the beginning. It was so well done. Um, like I could literally see this happening for real. Like if Disney came out with uh, D23, it would be this. And it's just kind of funny. And I, I, enjoyed it it tickled me pink i agree with you that's my number three as well uh, we'll just go for fidelity's sake with the the first one where they talked about phases seven through 19 uh but just all those clips worked like a charm for me i think it's hilarious and uh as s- something that has served as like a critique of mm, you know the capital capitalistic machine but specifically like the superhero industrial complex in which we find ourselves now it's kind of a return to form for that um even though it's also been a biting critique of our current political climate as well but it was good to to get back into just making fun of soups and i loved it madison your number two my number two has to be the uh vampire sheep i just think it was funny just in general vampire sheep did you see thor love and thunder Mm -hmm. did you like the screaming goats did that make you laugh or was that I, I gratingly annoying it was not as memorable i do not remember that oh, you would remember the goats ah, no <laughs> Because I thought the goats were funny, and I think that was the breaking point for most people in that movie. Mm. Um, I remember talking to a friend of the show, Sydney Volpe, and she was like, did you think the goats were funny? And I was like, I did. She's like, see, that's where we <laughs> she's differ. Not, she's not a goat girly? <laughs> no, she's not a goat truther. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm I'm easily impressed with the weirdness of this, of this show. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you look back at all of my favorite moments, a lot of it is the weird shit that happens. And so I, I'm here for the weird shit, and I liked the, the killer sheep slash vampire sheep. <laughs> It just was funny, especially when it just started to throw up. I don't know. It's just so funny. <laughs> you should put that on your Instagram bio. Here for the weird. Here for the weird. Well, that, might okay. not, that might not work out for maybe, you. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe not on my Instagram. Maybe on something else. I don't know. I'm seeing a merch opportunity. <laughs> Here for the weird. Here for the weird. Here for the weird. Just a picture of Donald Sutherland. <laughs> <laughs> the body snatchers so point yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> or Pierce Brosnan from Mamma Mia. Oh. oh, that's even better. <laughs> Here I go again. Uh, Steve, your number two. Uh, my number two is Stan Edgar returning. 
Uh, I just, oh, that's a good that's one. That's a good one. I, I just put that in. I, I honestly wasn't, ex- when they yes. were like, we need a presidential pardon. Like I was not expecting that this is where we were going. No. So as soon yeah. as he, they're in that like little prison waiting room area. Didn't know what was happening. But as soon as Giancarlo walked through that door, I was like, fuck. Yeah, I'm in, baby. I'm putting together a team. Hello. <laughs> Have you heard of the Suicide Squad? <laughs> it'll, be, <laughs> it'll be better because no one will die. This will be the murder squad. <laughs> It'll be the fuck bitches get money squad. Mm. That's the first goal. <laughs> it's in the name. Together. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's he's just a, a great asset and I'm always happy to see him on my screen. So that's my number two. My yes. number two is the death of Hugh Sr. Mm. Uh, it just it hit. I got to say again, I don't know if it was just gratitude that that plot line has come to a, a juncture, a turning point. Uh, but I'd love me some Simon Pegg. And I mm-hmm. think that Jack Quaid did a phenomenal job. Don't know what's going to happen with his relationship with his mother. Uh, it just feels like a weird episode of Shameless in the middle of the boys, mm. uh, like the mother returning and stuff. But uh, that scene did hit. It was very, very sad. Madison, your favorite moment of episode five. My favorite moment is your number two, which is um, Huey saying goodbye to his dad and also the hospital scenes where he's like going around aimlessly, like accidentally killing people Um, for all the same reasons. I think it was very um, emotionally captivating. I think Jack Quaid did a really good job. Um, It was, in my opinion, a little odd how that story came to a close. However, I still think there was a lot of emotional weight there. Um, And yeah, I. I feel like in proper the boys fashion, him dying while his last words being Tom Hanks, I think is very, very sweet, very funny. So that's my favorite moment. That's my favorite moment as well. Yes. Uh, I mean, I love Simon Pegg and all three of them were really bringing their A game in that final scene. And even though like it got me, it worked. I haven't been a huge fan of this plot line all season. So I was like shocked that this final scene actually was hitting me and I was tearing up, but also kind of chuckling when he's like, all those places that Tom Hanks saw, like, like it's, Mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, I want to give you, I want to, I want to hand feed you pizza rolls, my guy. Right. Um, but everything you just said, I really, really like that scene. And we got to make sure they're not too hot. I know I would blow on them for him. (laughs) I bet you would. (laughs) The pizza rolls. Right, right, right. (laughs) Uh, my favorite moment is when Frenchie said, that man is in no condition to fuck a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Madison was talking about some really serious shit, and I started chuckling <laughs> thinking about it. Just picturing <laughs> Huey, like, thinking of what the guy would be doing if he was in a condition, you know? You mean Frenchie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, he used to fuck all of them. How is this going to work? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> he doesn't have enough semen for that. <laughs> we don't have that kind of time. This plan is terrible. There's at least six sheep. Terrible. I tried to say the French word. Terrible. <laughs> That's it. That's our diabolical moments, which brings us to our vault vault segment. Oh. I got nothing. I know Steve's rolling deep. What do you got, Madison? I mean, truly, it's just like the comparison with the, the Disney Expo. That's mm-hmm. the only thing I got. But I know Steve, he paused all the screens. I'm sure you have a ton. I paused stuff. all the screens. I thought it'd be fun to kind of go through and see some of the, the, the films that are coming out in the different phases and I some of the if, things they were highlighting. I wonder if they like matched them to a specific like Marvel movie or a Disney movie. I think. Do so you think some of them are? At least. A couple of them are like one for one direct ripoffs of okay. of Let's hear maybe it. not Marvel movies, but like bigger, bigger superhero movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so in the beginning, when they're showing the original trailer um, for V fifty two, whatever it is, uh, we see that their first movie from nineteen fifty three is Bombsite in the Curse of Fu Manchu. Uh, there's a Budweiser ad featuring Liberty. Mm. We all remember Liberty. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a nineteen sixty seven film featuring uh, Crimson. The night. <laughs> The 1970 ad for not littering, which is a direct rip off of a real world ad where someone litters off the side of the street and there's a Native American person who turns and has the single tear. Yeah, it's like an iconic. But this one is just thing. a white dude. This is a clearly just a white guy named Big Chief Apache says, don't <laughs> litter, Kimosabi. Oh, no. And it's like, fuck, that's rough. Um, 19, 1984 Countess Whiskey Sunrise. Don't really know who that's in a direct relation to. That's probably like a comic Easter egg that I'm not aware of. In 1988, Red Thunder 2 comes out with the tagline, the Soviet Union has declared war on the United States again. (laughs) 
And it, I think it's a payback movie because it says payback or back at the bottom of it. Mm. Uh, 1979, this means noir. You don't find him. He finds you. <laughs> <laughs> but then we get to the phases. All right. Yeah. Uh, now, some of these, again, we're watching on a screener and the screeners aren't like high def, believe yeah. it or not. So some of the text was so small, I couldn't make out what some of the words were. So in phase seven, this is the Vought release. We have Training A-Train. There's a Homelander movie that has a s- subtitle that I could not see. The Seven Reborn, which is funny because every phase has a seven movie and it's The Seven Reborn. The Seven Returns. Uh, the Seven Forever. <laughs> it's just that kind of stuff. The Seven Infinity. Uh, there's the Super School. Super School is, is placed in phase seven. Firecracker, the Lord's Savior. The Deep Secrets of Atlantis. Uh, and then Tech Night, I, and I couldn't see the, the tagline. Phase eight, we have The Deep Lifeguard Summer, which sounds hilarious. I would watch yeah. that. Tech Night, Nightlight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this one was interesting. G2, G-Men, which is a comic book reference because in the comic yeah, the book, there's a group of men called the G-Men, which are X-Men parodies, mm-hmm. where uh, isn't the John Godolkin is like the... Professor X of mm-hmm. that world where yes. he's a pedophile and he's just grooming these children in his school of gifted youngsters. <laughs> That's why I highly recommend you watch Gen V because it's very X-Men coded. Oh, okay. I love X-Men. It's so fun. Okay. okay. That just sold me. Uh, Homelander Annihilation, A-Train Off the Tracks, Firecracker, Heaven's Miracle, and Teenage Kicks, Home for Kwanzaa 2. <laughs> Teenage Kicks is a uh, Teen Titans mm. ripoff that I think A-Train and Sister Sage were part of. I at think one so. They were, yeah. 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 Uh, phase 10, or I'm sorry, phase nine, double standards. That's the, the high cost one that A-Train was talking about. The deep gods and dolphins. A-Train into the multiverse. Firecracker, God help me. <laughs> Homelander, just as served. God help me. <laughs> you know that there's somebody, like, they were storyboarding what these were going to be called. And I'm sure in the back of their head, they all have, like, synopsises. Synopsis? Synopsis. Synopsis. I went to school. <laughs> and, um, That's why. Yeah. Yeah. I'm American sure. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's like tiny summaries of all of these movies. And I really yeah. hope at some point there's like an extended version of the show that comes out like with a booklet of what those oh, all, yeah. what all those stories are. And shout out to all the graphic designers that mocked up like yeah. logos for all of these fake things. Yeah. I'm sure they had such a, for a with two that. second bit. Oh, those people. So, so fun. Oh, uh, we got Teenage Kicks Pitch Day. Black Noir, Back to Hanoi 3, N- Just Night, I assume Tech Night's new movie called Night, I guess that's the reboot, uh, G3, G-Men, <laughs> and then finally in Phase 10 we have Silent Vengeance 3, I don't know who that's for, Flipped, that's the Godolkin, Guardians of the Godolkin, uh, Speedwalkers 2, Mall Race, don't know who that's for, <laughs> but I love that premise, uh, Let There Be Night. Another Tech Night movie? Yep. Uh, a Christmas Wish. I don't know who this is for, but I did not catch A Christmas Wish. Uh, wish. Teenage Kicks, Sex Ed. And, oh. then, and lastly, I think you'll get a kick out of this. G-Men, Days Pass from the Future. <laughs> <laughs> a little Days of Future Pass reference. Oh, oh hell yeah. Gosh. Love it. Those are great. But I just thought that was fun to kind of... We still got like six more out. phases. They need to have another slide because they said yeah. seven to 19 or something. Mm-hmm. Crazy. I'm sure that'll come out online at some point. Anything else from the vault? That's all I have for the vault. Which brings us to our compound VIPs, our favorite performance from the episode. Madison, who are you going to nominate? I, so I feel like this is the last time that I'll be able to nominate this person. So I'm nominating. S- <laughs> who? <laughs> no. Oh. The writer that's a sexual pest. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to nominate Simon Pegg. I think um, he did a really good job. Um, and I don't know, we, we really haven't gotten to see him have his own episode. And not that like this is solely like focused on him, but we did get to see a lot of him. And I think he, he did a really good job at being frantic and crazy and not knowing what the fuck was going on. He's great. Yeah. So I nominate him. Wonderful choice. It. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm going to come clean. Going into this conversation, I had Simon Pegg written down as my compound VIP. But 
for all the reasons you said, Madison, because he's mm -hmm. wonderful. I love him. This would be the last opportunity for me to give it to him. But as we're talking throughout this episode, I realized my true favorite was Giancarlo Esposito <laughs> as Stan Edgar. Just because yeah. I fucking love that guy's swag. Yeah. And he just commands every shot he's in. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to give it to him. Just I just love him. I'm I giving him to his scarf. Oh, his scarf. I like that. I need a towel. Uh, I wanted to give it to Frenchie, but I'm going to give it to Simon Pegg as well. I, I adore that man all the way back to, to Shaun of the Dead and beyond. Sit down, Karen Fukuhara. Spaced probably Fugahara. for Steve. Ooh, it took a legend of cinema to displace Kara Fukuhara. Just because she she's, needs to rest, she can right. sit. <laughs> she's been slaying for so long. Okay. I'm sure she's tired from yeah. carrying this show. I'm sure. Uh, but I'm giving it to Simon Pegg this, this round. I love that man. So love tune him. in. Next Friday for our coverage of episode six, only three episodes remain. Six. What? Uh, but if you're a House of the Dragon fan, don't forget to tune in Monday, sometimes Sunday night late. Who knows? Uh, we will be covering every single episode of House of the Dragon throughout mm -hmm. the rest of the season of season two. And uh, that's a that's a fun time. Every Wednesday, Patreon only. We're covering Game of Thrones. And also, by the time you listen to this, eh, maybe, I don't know, soon you'll have access on the Patreon to Jaws. Yeah, Jaws will come out on Patreon before this episode drops. Yes. And Swingers. Shortly after that. Swingers. Swingers is already up, my guy. Oh, yeah. Ha. It's been up for days. Ha. Check out Swing. I don't have, I'm actually not a patron. So would, that's true. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, those are the two bonus episodes uh, in addition to the Game of Thrones for the month of June. That's all the time we have for right now. We've got to go return some videotapes. My name is Kit. My name's Madison. And I'm Steve. And this was Streaming Things, Streaming the Boys. Happy streaming. Anyone want some meth? Last chance. Going once. I'm about to leave. Just a key bump. You can see how razzed I am. It was in prison. Did you see Frenchie do the key bump? You did. I did. I was like, Ooh, he did key it bump. a couple times. <laughs> Ooh, key bump. Ooh. Key bump. An actual key bump. In the wild.